Hi, I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and here's what I'm watching. China's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, on its 10th anniversary. Actually, I've been watching the BRI literally from its beginning. I recall September 7th, 2013, when President Xi Jinping, standing at a lectern at Nazarbayev University in Kazakhstan, announced China's vision to build a Silk Road economic belt over land across Eurasia, engaging Central Asia and linking with Europe. The next month, addressing the Indonesian parliament, she proposed the 21st century maritime Silk Road over water, China reaching out to Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. I spoke at the first two BRI conferences, 2014 in Urumqi, Xinjiang, the new Silk Road economic belt, and in 2015 in Chuanzhou, Fujian, the 21st century maritime Silk Road. The BRI has been increasingly the centerpiece of China's foreign policy. It leverages China's unequaled experiences and competitive advantages in constructing infrastructure, rail, roads, ports, airports, power plants, telecom. Nothing is more important for developing countries than infrastructure. Over the last 10 years, China has signed more than 200 BRI cooperation documents with 152 countries and 32 international organizations covering more than three quarters of the countries on Earth. China has established more than 3,000 cooperation projects, committing and completing from 2013 to 2022, investments exceeding 1.2 trillion US dollars and 800 billion US dollars respectively, accounting for more than half of total foreign projects. Chinese goods flow to more than 300 ports. In a recent paper, China says that over the decade, the country has contributed its strength to building a global community of shared future. And in an authoritative retrospective, the head of the NDRC, which oversees the BRI, wrote that the country adheres to the principles of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits, and to the concepts of openness, greenness, and integrity, and aimed at high standards sustainability, and benefiting people's livelihoods. BRI's five aspects, policy communication, infrastructure connectivity, unimpeded trade, capital financing, and people-to-people -people bonding. Over the 10 years, China has constructed six major international economic corridors. New Eurasian Continental Bridge, formed around the Trans-Eurasian International Railway trunk line, from China's Jiangsu province to Rotterdam in the Netherlands, China, Mongolia, Russia, China, Central Asia, West Asia, from China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region via Central Asia to the Persian Gulf, the Mediterranean, and the Arabian Peninsula, China, Pakistan Economic Corridor from Kashin, Xinjiang, China, to Gwadar Port in Pakistan, Southwest Asia Continental Bridge or the Bangladesh-China-India-Minyamar Economic Corridor, and China-Indochina from Yunnan Province and guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region in Southwest China, to and through Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. Major projects, the just-opened Jakarta-Bandung Line, Indonesia's first high-speed railway, branded Woosh, but not without controversy. Hungary-Serbia Railway, China Laos Railway, and the Piraeus Port in Athens, Greece. The BRI's flagship project are the China Europe freight trains, with 84 operating routes reaching 211 cities in 25 European countries, promoting interconnection and enhancing trade all along the routes. China's BRI is not charity. China says it seeks win win, which means that China wins too. China wins via preferential access to vast sources of raw materials, for example, oil, substantial business for its massive state-owned construction companies, developing new markets for its products, and geopolitical support for contentious issues. China thinks very long-term. If I'd be telling a story that the BRI is all roses and cheers, that the BRI sprouts no problems, then I'd be telling a falsehood. Challenges abound, including excessive debt, project delays, poor project selection, corruption, cultural clashes, terrorism, and pushback, 
both from host countries and Western countries. Yet, almost every developing country wants more, not less, of China's BRI. They need it. I'm Keeping Watch. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn.